two topics that are interesting at this point are to talk about uh, seasons and to also talk about how tides work. Um, and so in talking about both of these, um, we're going to use a couple um, couple different images. So the first thing is the, the reminder that if this is the sun, that the earth is traveling around the sun in an elliptical orbit. Now, Newton looked at this, as Kepler had this data, Newton looked at this and said, this is quite obvious that there has to be a force going on here. Because the only way that Kepler's theory about the fact that planets were speeding up and slowing down, um, and I should probably make this a little bit wider here, um, the only way that Kepler's theory about planets speeding up and slowing down would work is if there was a force to cause acceleration. And so Kepler, Kepler realized planets travel faster when they're near the star. They travel slower when they're far away from the star. Newton, looking at that data, uh, says, no kidding, that would mean that there is a force. And so what we find is that when we look at the universal law of gravitation, the force is greater near the star because there is a smaller radius. The force is less away from the star because there is a greater radius. The masses don't change. Gravitational constant doesn't change. What we experience, though, in um, in in our sun earth system is almost a circle it's not a perfect circle but it's pretty darn close that's still that's a pretty bad looking circle but uh it it is it is pretty close um so if that's the case then why do we have seasons because if the if it's a circle the amount of sun that we're getting at any point during the calendar year should be the same, and so we should be getting we should be getting a uh, season that is pretty much universal every month of the year. Doesn't happen. We have winter, we have summer, and the summer in the north is the winter in the south, and vice versa. The answer comes down to the fact that we have a tilted axis, and so in this image, when we look at the Earth over here during the summer months, we, what we see summer in the northern hemisphere, the earth is slightly tipped towards the sun. And we stay at this axis, this axis here, same angle through all of our seasons. The, uh, the reason that happens um, is because the earth is, it's about the earth's rotation and we are atop and we are keeping that gyroscopic procession. There would need to be a torque to cause us to tip in another direction. So we're staying as a top rotating around the sun. So in the summer, we are tipped, we are tipped with more sunlight coming in. The reality is, though, as I mentioned to you back here, we do not travel in a complete circle. It's close, but we don't travel in a complete circle. And when we are in the summer, we are actually further away from the sun than when we are in the winter by a very small, uh, very small amount. But the the reality is that we are still further away. And so the reason we have summer is because we get more sunlight and the ozone layer and the uh, uh, other greenhouse gases are keeping the solar energy in our region of the the earth there there's not enough time for the heat to dissipate and, and and move out into space when we get to the winter months we are tipped away and so there is a region where we are in shadow longer. And so that means there's enough time for the temperature to drop. So that's how it works. We're speeding up and we're slowing down as we move around. We are not traveling in a complete circle, but as we're traveling around, we are going through seasons because we're on a tipped axis. If we were on a 
straight up and down access. We weren't tipped. We were just straight up and down all over. We would not experience the uh, the seasons. Okay, so let's talk about tides. When we talk about tides, what we're talking about is the gravitational attraction of water, which is a fluid. It's allowed to move around uh, to the moon and to the sun. And so you could see in this simulator that as the moon travels around the Earth, and the moon is traveling around the Earth once every 28 days, um, we are going to see that the water is going to be gravitationally attracted to the moon. And so the Earth, which is spinning at a much faster rate, the Earth is spinning once every 20 four hours, is going to literally pass underneath the tide. So the tide rises because at the moment we reach high tide, the moon is directly overhead. Now you'll notice there's a 12-hour window here where the moon and the uh, earth are in opposite um, locations, and the tide appears on that back side again. Um, and so every 12 hours, we get the high tide. You could say that there's a attraction and a lack of attraction at those two points, at the, the point closest to the moon and the point furthest from the moon. Now, when we talk about the high, high tides, what we're talking about is times when the earth and the moon and the sun are all in alignment. For example, a time where that is occurring in our diagram is right now. And so at that point, we're seeing, and it's occurring again, when that happens, we are seeing that the earth is providing, uh, or the earth has a greater tide on it because both the moon and the sun are providing a little bit of a force. The sun is not providing a very big force in, that affects the tide, but it's a little, it, but it does affect it. It does have a little bit of an effect. The moon, though, is the key to, to the tides occurring. Now, an interesting fact about fluids is that we all know that the Earth is round, and we all know that, f for example, this is North America and this is Europe. What you might not realize is that there is a gigantic mountain range between us, a major valley and a gigantic mountain range. And so in the oceans, we have the North Atlantic Ridge. So if this is a line, if this is the Earth and this is North America um, over here, and this is the ocean down in here, this goes down and then it comes back up here in Europe. And we have an ocean ridge uh, in here. It doesn't go up that high, but it's, a, it's higher than the low point of the ocean. And so what we find is this whole area here is, is filled with water. Um, and again, this is going to be a little bit lower. Uh, lower. It's going to be, be more, like, more like this, but it's very dense, very dense area of... Uh, rock where the Earth's crust has been pu been pulling apart, and new um, material is spewing out from the uh, center of the Earth, and so we get this this ridge line, dense rock, rocky material. What happens here is that the water gets pulled in. There's a gravitational attraction. The water is able to move with very low friction inward. And so if you were sailing across the ocean, you might imagine that the, this is the, the earth, you might imagine that the uh, uh, water levels are going to be constant there. Um, and the reality is that below this rock level, below this uh, uh, water where the rock is, there is going to be a rise because all the water is getting pulled inward to there. And so as you're sailing along, you actually sail uphill and then back downhill um, with the water because there is a higher sea level in those areas. So those are some interesting facts that, that accompany what we have been talking about.